What I've got here are two of the biggest spiders in the East Coast. Doesn't get much better than this. Being big, hairy spiders, wolf spiders and fishing spiders are very easily confused, but there are some key differences that can help tell these two spiders apart. So I'm hoping to get one of each in front of the camera today and show you how to tell them apart. My search takes me to the stream that runs through my yard. Out here among the sea of elephant ears is fishing spider territory. In the last few weeks, we've seen some monsters out here. I don't know that I'll find a giant, but I'm betting with enough patience, somewhere out here lurks a fishing spider that we can catch and then hopefully compare to a wolf spider. Now, it's a little bit later in the year than I usually find big, massive fishing spiders. The video you saw last week um, was actually filmed a little bit in advance, but I think I can probably find a decent sized fishing spider out here. Fishing spiders are typically ambush predators. They'll sit on leaves of elephant ears or on the surface of the water, waiting for vibrations of fallen insects, or even fish underneath the surface. Once they get a vibration, super accurate sensory hairs in their legs can tell them what direction and how far the disturbance is. The spider can then skate over to the disturbance and potentially claim a meal. Out here in the creek, searching diligently on elephant ears and near population centers of the mosquito fish that call this stream home, will likely yield a nice fishing spider catch. Right there, you can kind of see him. It's not the biggest spider I've ever seen, but it's a decent sized fishing spider. I can see her better from this angle. She's underneath, he's right here underneath this really beat up leaf. Now the best way to catch a fishing spider when they're on a leaf like this so you want to have your jar open. What you're going to do is you're going to come from above with the main part of the jar and then clasp from underneath with the lid. And you'll have them encapsulated in the jar. I'm talking too loud. All right. We're going to change our approach. Oh, he jumped. Oh, wait, there's an even bigger one here. What am I doing? Right there. That's even better. I think it's a female. Might be grabbing it. Oh, we got her. There's our fishing spider. Next stop, wolf spider. While the main body of the creek is fishing spider territory, in the floodplain where the water flow slows down, you begin to enter the domain of the wolf spider. Out here, there's lots of ground insect activity on the shores of the creek which attract ground predators, just like the wolf spider. The dark brown coloration of a tigrosa wolf spider gives an impeccable camouflage in this muddy environment, and their speed and agility mean that very few prey items can escape this fierce predator. My hope is to find one of these tigrosas, since they're one of the biggest wolf spiders that I can find here in central North Carolina. All right, we're upstream from where we found the fishing spider. And this spot right here is actually a really good place for me when I'm looking for wolf spiders. There's a lot of like grassy plants that grow along the shore of this part of the stream. And a lot of big Tigrosa wolf spiders make their home in this area. Weirdly enough, I find a lot of them during the daytime hanging out on the edge of crayfish burrows. And there's a lot of crayfish burrows active right now. So I'm hoping we'll be able to find a Tigrosa sitting there and waiting for a meal. Here's our first crayfish burrow. I don't see any wolf spiders hanging out nearby, but there's plenty more where this came from. Got another one over there. Uh, those are, the bigger crayfish burrows are usually a bit more productive. I'm not sure why the wolf spiders like to hang out on them, but. Oh, yep, there's a tigrosa right there. Right there. It's not a huge one, but it's one of the bigger ones I've seen this month. Either way, I'm gonna grab my jar real quick. All right, now the trick with a spider this size, he's very much too small to pick up with your bare hands. What you wanna do, you wanna kinda set the place you want him to go down in front of him and sort of startle him 
Oh, he's going around. No, go in the burrow. Not go in the burrow. There he goes. Well, we got our fishing spider. We've got our wolf spider. Now it's time to get them both up close for the cameras and I'll show you how to tell them apart. What I've got here are two of the biggest spiders in the East Coast. Doesn't get much better than this. Now, neither of these two spiders are fully grown, but the size difference here is about what you'd expect to see in fully grown adults. On my left here, your right, I have a Tigerosa wolf spider. And on my right, your left, I have a spotted fishing spider. These guys are two huge brown hairy spiders and they're really easily confused. Big spider, big fangs. Usually most people don't stick around long enough to see if it's a wolf spider or a fishing spider. They tend to just squish it and move on. So the wolf spider is gonna have shorter, stockier legs packed with muscle and really, really big eyes in the front of its face. That's because where it lives in the forest floor environment, it's an active hunter that uses its speed and eyesight to hunt down prey. Whereas the fishing spider is gonna have really long legs for its body. That's because it's using those to distribute its mass over a large area so that it can really skim and float on top of the water using surface tension to its advantage. If you're brave enough to get close enough to these guys' faces, the key, key difference that you're gonna really see is in the face. Your wolf spider is gonna have two big eyes in the center and the rest of its eyes are gonna be kind of centralized still because its vision is gonna be looking forward and around. Whereas the fishing spider, which doesn't use its vision quite as much, is gonna have smaller eyes and they're gonna be spread all over so that it can kind of, it kind of scan around for prey. Fishing spider is gonna use more of its sense of touch though. So it's gonna use those really long legs with lots of sensory hairs to pick up vibrations in the water or the surface that it's sitting on. Now I'm sure you're wondering, if these two spiders were to fight, who would win? And honestly, I couldn't justify putting Versus in the title if I didn't at least address that question. As it stands, these two spiders here are roughly the same size. Due to the wolf spider's speed, in a duel between any two spiders of the same size, the wolf spider will always win. It's just too quick and too packed with muscle and would be able to overpower the fishing spider with absolutely no contest. This outcome changes if we're talking about fully grown individuals. At their maximum size, a spotted fishing spider like this can max out between four to five inches in leg span. At that point, while a fully grown wolf spider would still be much faster than the fishing spider, the fishing spider's legs serve as an early warning system. Those sensory hairs would pick up the wolf spider coming before it was in striking range. And even if the wolf spider was able to get first blood, it would likely only be able to bite one of the legs. Since spiders are known to throw off legs once they're compromised, what would likely happen is the fishing spider would shed the compromised leg that the wolf spider attacked and counter with a pounce of its own, driving those massive fangs into the wolf spider's body. And while their venom is no threat to a human, once it's inside a small invertebrate like a wolf spider, the end is near. Now, it wouldn't be very nice to actually test that theory and have these two spiders fight. So I'm gonna go ahead and release these guys back into their respective environments. I hope this video helped you learn the difference in how to identify a wolf spider versus a fishing spider. And I hope this gave you a little bit of insight into which one of these animals would win if they were to duel in the wild. If you like creepy spider videos like this one, check out the link on your screen. That's all for this video, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.